performs the VO meter, measuring your voiceover progress. The VO meter is brought to you by voiceactorwebsites.com, Vocal Boot to Go, podcastdemos.com, Global Voice Acting Academy, JMC Demos, and IPDTL. And now, your hosts, Paul Stefano and Sean Daly. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this special episode of the VO Meter. Measuring your voiceover progress. Thank you, Mr. Daly. We are joined Thanks, today sir. by Jamie Muffet and Karen Guilfrey, who are accomplished voice actors, but also, more importantly, co-creators of the Vocation Conference, a conference coming up September 13th through the 15th in New York City. That's all about the business of voiceover. So we're excited to welcome both Jamie and Karen to talk to us about this exciting event. Karen and Jamie, how are you? I'm great. We're great. I, th- I mean, I don't want to speak for you, Jamie. How Julie, are you? Speak for well, Jamie. well, apparently I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. I'm pretty good. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, well, thanks so Karen, much for having us. Absolutely. Thank you both for being here. So, Karen, tell us a little bit about yourself and what prompted you to found the Vocation Conference. Well... I am a voice actor here living in New York City. Um, I've been doing voiceover for a few years now, a few, and <laughs> and I actually founded a group called Voice Actors of NYC. I was in a great group for women voice actors in New York, and there was nothing for both women and men. And my husband actually got into voiceover after our uh, daughter was born. And um, we thought, like, wow, there really needs to be something for for everybody in New York. So we started this group on Facebook. And within a year, we had over a thousand members. And um, we started doing events and classes, like 90 percent or 95 percent of all of our events and classes are free or donation based. So there's just like a ton of people here who are in voiceover. And, you know, it's one of the major markets. And Jamie and I kind of hooked up through that group. And uh, the reason why we decided to do the conference in New York is because there's just this plethora of wonderful things here. And um, yeah, that's that's that. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about the conference in general and some of the things people can expect when they go to the conference. Yeah, so the conference is specifically dedicated to the business of voiceover. We wanted to create something that was different from the other conferences that are out there that are, you know, based on performance and business and, you know, a smattering of other things in there. This one will solely be focused on you as an entrepreneur, freelance voice actor, and how you can make the most of of your voice acting business. So we're going to have speakers and panelists and classes all about the business side. We have um, people coming to talk about, or Robert Silampali is coming to talk about the legal part of voiceover. We have people talking about branding and marketing, and we have an awesome casting panel uh, and an agent panel and a small group about audiobooks and the business of audiobooks. We have J. Michael Collins is our keynote speaker, which we're very excited about. And um, it's a chance to get to know the voice actors in New York City and whoever else travels for the conference. We're hoping to get lots of people from other places and to just kind of meet and network and really dive into how you can make your business as successful as it can be. Well, this is the inaugural conference, and it's in New York City, as you mentioned. Tell us a little bit about why you chose New York City and the specific location. And give us a location, by the way, too, so folks can find it. Yeah, so we're holding the conference at Symphony Space, which is a beautiful venue on 95th and Broadway, Upper West Side, very posh. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So uh, the reason why we chose New York City is, one, because I'm here and Jamie's only an hour away in Pennsylvania. And uh, I have this great group of all of these wonderful voice actors. And New York City is like the second biggest major market for voiceover. And there wasn't really a conference in New York for voiceover. Mm. Um, There's APAC. And then, you know, there are some other smaller things that happen every once in a while. But there wasn't anything that, that was really like, this is the New York conference. If you've been meaning to get to New York, here's a reason. It's tax deductible. Come on over, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, that's, so that's pretty much why. 
Very cool. So what exactly are you guys hoping for attendees to walk away from learning from the conference? Jamie, you want to take this one? Yeah, sure. Um, well, the reason we chose the business, the subject of business, is that I think both of us feel the same way, that you can walk away from learning about business with a huge amount of information that you didn't have when you set foot in the conference on the first day. Conferences are fantastic, but conferences to do with any kind of creative art like you know, voiceover or music or whatever, the creative side, you're not going to walk in not being able to do promo and walk out being a promo actor. <laughs> so I think what's great about this conference is you can, you know, if you pay attention, you take notes and you, you know, interact and you chat with everyone and you meet the speakers, you can learn and walk away with a huge amount of practical information that you can immediately employ. So, you know, Karen was talking about the subjects that we're covering, you know, marketing and branding and, you know, covering everything you need to know about the business of audiobooks and uh, Joe Davis from voiceover. From voiceactorwebsites.com. He's actually a sponsor of our show. He's coming up. So all these things you can go home that following week and just plug into your business straight away and hopefully see results fairly quickly because we didn't want to just do another voiceover conference. The conferences that are out there now, most of them are fantastic. <laughs> There's the ones that everyone knows and they're super huge and they cover everything, you know, you know, everything and <laughs> that you need to know to be in voiceover. Um, but we wanted to do something a little bit different and really focus on the stuff that will actually impact your career. And it's not necessarily the sexiest stuff <laughs> but it's if you commit to spending a couple of days learning this in september you can probably advance your career significantly as re as a result of that you know no promises <laughs> it's all down to uh you know how everyone attacks this individually but i think that's that's why we focused on this subject and why we think it's actually got significant value for people i also want to say that i think Often voice actors go into it, you know, they, they start out as on-camera actors or theater actors or like I was an opera singer <laughs> at first. And you go into it with this idea that you are uh, an artist, maybe, mm -hmm. which you absolutely are. But there is a whole nother part of the business today that is so different from the days when you used to just have an agent and you went to the auditions that your agent sent you on and hopefully you booked it. And if you booked it, then you would sign the contract that your agent worked on for you and you would go to a studio and someone else would record you. You know, it's so different now. We are so much more like like uh, freelance photographers I yeah. think, than actors who work in that way still. You know, a freelance photographer has to have their own equipment. They have to know how to use photo editing software. They have to know how to negotiate prices and figure out, you know, how much to charge for a wedding versus doing a family newborn shoot. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we and we're the same thing. But, you know, freelance photographers are still artists and mm. we are as well. And just knowing the whole business part of the job is something that I think needs to be focused on now more than it ever, you know, had has been needed. And, and particularly when you're starting this career, 99% of what you're doing is this stuff, is setting this stuff up. When you get to the point where you're booking regularly and your website is bringing in lots of people and you've got an agent working on your behalf, you're years into your career at this point. So really where you need to, you know, of course you need to work on your performance and your 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 um, creative abilities. But what you're going to be doing, your bread and butter every single day is is the stuff that we're covering. So it's important to get sort of off on the right foot with all that, I think. Yeah, that sounds incredible. I mean, especially nowadays, because like you said, people still have this antiquated idea of what a professional voice actor looks like. And yeah. people will be resistant when you tell them what is actually required. Mm -hmm. So, oh, yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, we all know we all see we all see the posts. <laughs> but but yeah, I mean, think, I think it's so important because very often people who finally accept, OK, maybe this is a lot more work than I thought it was. Like you said, very often they have no idea what to do or what steps to take to build that solid foundation. Uh, of self-marketing. So I think yeah. this is a really, 
great service that you guys are offering with this conference. And, yeah, you know, you. even even people who've been in the business for a long time who started a certain way and now the business has really shifted, mm. uh, they they can sometimes be, you know, hesitant to to jump into the new way. And so, you know, it's for it's not just for new people. It's for people who've been doing it a while, too, if you want yeah. to learn more. Yeah, I like awesome. your analogy of the the freelance photographer. In a lot of ways, it's kind of like operating a food truck too. Whereas yeah. you're focusing on the business, <laughs> random. You're, you're you're peddling your services wherever you can, and at the core of what a food truck operator does is cook. But if if you can't maintain that that, that your chops basically and, and and being able to make the food you make, you're still not you're not going to be successful. Just like you won't be in voiceover if you don't maintain your uh, your your acting chops and and get out there and market. For sure. Yeah, and you can make the best, you know, tacos or whatever it is that you make in your food truck. But if no one knows about it and, and if you can't keep track of your costs and all the, the, the you know, quote unquote boring stuff, you're not going to get anywhere. You know, and you'll, you know, you might have a summer season and you won't come back. You know, yeah. so mm -hmm. um, that stuff gets ignored. We, we've not made this an easy sell for ourselves because, <laughs> you know, selling this stuff is doesn't seem like it's super, super going to be amazingly fun. But it's so crucial to enable your creative career to thrive you know that's why we've sort of stuck to our guns on this and focused on the business and the, the marketing side yeah i think that the i think that my success in voiceover i want to say in quotation marks <laughs> um <laughs> really happened when i shifted the way that i thought and i thought of myself as a business yeah. versus mm -hmm. versus an actor coming from the opera world you know, it's very much like I do what my manager or agent has assigned for me to do. I don't have any, like, there isn't a lot of, um, you don't have a lot of free will and free agency when it comes to contacting opera houses to say like, hey, what do you have coming up next season? Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, so I I came from that world not thinking that I could get my own work. And it wasn't until I started thinking like, wait a minute. I am a business. I provide a service. My service includes all of these extra things, not just my voice. It includes my booth. It includes my connectivity. It includes my website, my editing capabilities, blah, blah, blah. And that's when the shift really happened for me. And it's liberating, right? I mean, you, yeah. you can go out and find your own work and find your clients and find your career without waiting for a gatekeeper to let you in. Exactly. Um, so, you know, you work on your own abilities the whole time and then you find out what it is that you do and then once you have that understanding of who you are and where you want to go then it's down to you to yeah. put that work in um, and if you're short than, on yeah. cash you're not helpless you know yeah. there's there is something you can do if you know okay last month i had this big job and i could pay all my bills and and then some this month i don't have anything coming up i'm gonna just do a ton of direct marketing I'm yeah. going to do a ton of auditions. And it's kind of, it makes you feel more in control. Mm -hmm. For sure. Which is cool. See, I, I love that because so, like we were saying before, so many people are either just ignorant of what's required or intimidated by it. And I love yeah. this idea that it can be liberating and empowering to to gain that knowledge and then take full control of your business. Yeah. yeah. I think if you have a quiet spell in voiceover, <laughs> which happens to all of us occasionally, it really makes you reassess taking control of your own career rather yes. than relying on the occasional big gig to come in or, you know, you get used to having this weekly project or something and then it goes away and you're like, oh, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, so, you know, that liberation is, is, is vitally important to maintaining a consistent income and, you know, maintaining your sanity in a world where, you know, it can be quite unpredictable. You can actually gain control over a, a lot of stuff. Jamie, you mentioned not necessarily walking away with advancing your career from the conference right away. However, you do have several agents as presenters and attending the conference. Can you tell us a little bit about what their role will be? And was that a tough sell for this conference? Uh, well, the agents are going to be appearing on a panel. Um, and they're going to be sort of milling around, of course, after, before and after the panel. When are they going to be? When is the panel, Corin? It's, it's, um, it's Sunday, uh, Sunday, Sunday before lunch. Yeah. Sunday Before morning. our networking lunch. Yeah, ah. perfect timing. <laughs> so, it, um, well, it wasn't too much of a hard sell because between Karen and myself, we know a few agents in New York. And 
actually jim Kennelly helped us as well he at lotus been, productions yeah he's been a really great help yeah, finding us yeah yes, and they're actually sponsoring that panel which is pretty cool yeah cool so he's helped us introduce helped introduce us to some some fantastic agents that neither Karen or myself knew and i think we just explained the concept of the conference and they seemed we didn't really have to sell it all that hard you know we gave them plenty of notice as well <laughs> so um yeah it was uh and in terms of what we're getting out of it, I, I think we're really going to delve into what it is that they look for in prospective talent, but also what they look for when they work with talent and what is important to them f to uh, how the talent conducts themselves with them, but also when they're going out on jobs and working in studios or maybe connecting with talent on Badalgo Call or, you know, IPDTL or whatever it is. So all of the aspects of, you know, being a working pro in the agent world and union and non-union um, and how things are shifting as well. So I think that'll be that'll be an interesting discussion, I think. That's yeah, really agents are still a, a big part of the of the business and, and yeah. will be, I hope, you know, forever. I get a lot of work from my agents. I love them. Yeah. And um, yeah, they, I feel like we couldn't have a business conference and leave them out because they're such a huge part of you know, the voiceover industry. No, of course. Yeah. I love my agents. It's most of them have become really good close friends as well, which so I I'd want them to do well, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. We kind of hinted at it, uh, and it's obvious that you're very passionate about what this conference is providing, but what about you two? What are you hoping to gain from hosting this conference? I love getting voice actors and people who are in the business together in one place. Mm. I think it is one of the most thrilling, inspiring ex experiences for me and hopefully for everyone else. In my group, we do huge events with like 50 people a couple times a month just to get together because, you know, we're all in the same boat. And <laughs> it, having a community of people who you see in person is just so cool and mm. so important so i'm just excited to get everybody together in one place and just to learn as much as we possibly can there are people who are coming who i have never heard speak who i don't know a lot about yet but i know that they're awesome and yeah i, I really can't wait to meet them in person and for us to share our our livelihood yeah i mean for me up until a couple of years ago, I'd never probably would have wanted to do this. Um, <laughs> but moving out, moving out of New York, I moved to kind of the middle of nowhere. And so I had a studio and uh, I invited local people around, local voiceover people around. And I got to know sort of the, the local community, local voiceover community. And it was around about the same time that I started the podcast. So I was starting to interact more and more with other talent. And just like Karin was saying... I've started to really see the benefit of, you know, standing around the water cooler and ch chatting about the industry and, you know, getting feedback and finding out how others do what they do. I'm, you know, that's part of the reason why I have the VO School podcast is I just like sort of probing in there and finding out how everyone does things. And I'm sure it's the same for you guys. Mm -hmm. um, but last fall in, when was it, Karen, November, when we did the uh, Future of VoiceOver panel? Oh, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Um, Last fall. That was the first, yeah, that was the first time we, you and I collaborated on an event because I wanted to start getting into doing real world events, you know, yeah. as a sort of extension of the podcast. And that was the first time you and I put something on because we sort of pooled resources a little bit there with the podcast and with your group. Yeah. And that definitely whetted my appetite for this. So that's how I fell into this. And I'm just super excited about doing that at a much bigger level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the conference, once again, is September 13th through the 15th in New York City Yeah, at Symphony, Symphony Space. Symphony Space. Symphony Space. Yep. We're really excited to be there. We're going to be official correspondents. That's what we're going with, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we'll, we'll do some recording there. And uh, looking forward to that. Uh, but tell us the future of the conference after this year. I know you're, you're probably, your heads are spinning trying to go into the next <laughs> two months. But tell us about the future of the conference and where you hope to take it. Yeah, I mean, we we want to make sure that this goes well. We're, I mean, I'm sort of paranoid about making sure all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed <laughs> with everything. And you know, we're we're super excited about this, and I think 
probably I, I speak for both of us when we're pretty confident that this is going to be a, a pretty fun and rewarding experience for everyone involved. I can see this being a yearly thing in New York or the surrounding area or very close. And hopefully it just grows year on year and we can invite more and more people and we can have a bigger and better production every year. And we've I've got a few ideas for more elaborate things that I'd like to incorporate, but year one, that's not possible right now. But um, I think there's a huge potential for growth for this conference over the next few years. So those are my thoughts. What do you, what do you think, Aaron? I agree 100%. Mm. Very good. <laughs> With everything. That's, <laughs> that's exactly what I see as well. Guys, thank you so much for being here. I'm really excited for you. It sounds like a wonderful event. So how can we find out more about what's going on in the VO worlds of Karen Gilfrey and Jamie Muffet and, of course, the Vocation Conference? Yes. You can uh, check out all of the speakers and cool things that we have going on at Vocation by visiting www.vocationconference.com. If you want to check out anything, you know, with me or voice actors of NYC, you can find me on Facebook or join Voice Actors of NYC if you're in the New York area. We sometimes take people outside the New York area, but you know. <laughs> um, you allowed me in the building one time. Yeah, <laughs> we let you go. I think Seattle's just a little too far for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you can join if you want to see what's going on in New York. We have cool stuff happening all mm -hmm. the time. So. Yeah, but uh, vocationconference.com is the conference website where you can buy your tickets and find out more. How about you, Jamie? Where do we find you? Uh, well, my name, jamiemuffet.com, is my website. And there's two Fs and two Ts in Muffet. And dare I mention my podcast on your podcast? Would that be Glad so me, just... but yeah, <laughs> Please do. No, it's a wonderful okay. podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's a pleasure to be on this. I love listening to this podcast. I listen to it regularly. But my... you can also listen to... The VO School Podcast, that's my podcast. And it's on the usual you know, places, iTunes, Spotify, all those kind of places. And I'm on social media and stuff with my name. So that's how you can touch with me if you want to. All right. Well, thanks awesome. again, guys, for being on the VO Meter. We're looking forward to seeing you in New York. Thank you so much for doing this episode and allowing us to jabber on about this, this uh, conference. Um, really appreciate it. Thank you so much, guys. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for listening to this episode of the VO Meter. To follow along, visit us at www.vometer.com. VO Meter is powered by IPDTL. <laughs>